How's it going? Welcome to this little talk about uh, Hell's Creek and what I've, I suppose, learned about it. I used to live out by Hell's Creek um, near a town called Glasgow, Montana, and everything around there kind of revolved around Hell's Creek. There was a little museum of dinosaurs that they had found while building the earthen dam to make Fort Peck Lake, which is like the second largest man-made lake in the U.S. Uh, there they found Tyrannosauruses, Edmontosauruses, Triceratops, uh, Struthiomimus, uh, Tylosaurs, Mosasaurs, Plesiosaurs. I mean, there were a ton of really cool dinosaurs there. And I wanted to kind of take a look at why it was so important, or why it was so significant, or such a hub for these animals to be. And so before we go really talk about the animals, let's look at the land. So at the time of um, the end of the Cretaceous, you know, 66, 65 million years ago, now you ought to forgive me a little bit for the straightness of these lines, but North America was divided by an inland sea, which stretched from one uh, kind of part of a continent called Laramidia to the other side, which was like the Appalachia or something like that. But Laramidia is what we're concerned with. So Laramidia ran clear down to about California and up into Canada, maybe to the Northwest Territory up through here, Saskatchewan and Alberta. But that's what we've got. We've got Wyoming here. This would be a corner of Utah. This is Idaho. This is Montana, Saskatchewan, Alberta. And somewhere around 80 million years ago, the Pacific plate, uh, tectonic plate, began to shove under the North American plate and the subduction ensued and the Pacific plate didn't quite go deep under the earth but instead it went flat underneath this plate and so as it scraped against the bottom of the continent it shoved the Rocky Mountains up or began to shove them up now if they were beginning to come up you know 20 10 million years before the end of the Cretaceous things might have looked something like they do now, where the land is rippled and sticking up. Maybe they're not quite full mountains yet, but far more difficult to climb or walk through than the open plains of what, like, central Wyoming and Montana would be like. And so if you look, it is just uh, pretty obvious that you would stay on this side instead of walking through this. All the All the rock and everything that was on top of these mountains is beginning to fall off on this side, making it uh, just, I suppose, more treacherous, more encumbered to pass through. So I, like the dinosaurs, I would go this way. Any migrating herds of Edmontosaurs or uh, Triceratops, as you make your way into Montana, you're going to notice that this is kind of going to shove you over this way a little bit, and so you're just going to keep walking in a straight line, and you're going to run into what would be about Hell's Creek, right here on the edge of the Inland Sea. This expands back into a great big open grassland again in Saskatchewan, but you've been kind of pushed over here by this growing mountain range, this ripple in the land as the Pacific Plate continues to push this ripple forward. And so here you'd end up at this place. So let's go look at this place now. All right, here we are. This is Montana, Hell's Creek Formation, 66 million years ago. You can see that it's a, we'll ignore the Jeep there. You can see that it is a river and swamp land leading out to the Inland Sea, which this should be the edge of, or it's over that hill and we can't see it. These rivers would have crocodilians, and they would have fish, and they would have the Champsosaurus, which is a little, it's a crocodile-like lizard that probably would have lived at the water's edge. Uh, there were crazy fish out there. 
Um, the Pachyrizotus was uh, like a five, six foot long fish. The Xyphactinus was a 16 foot long fish. Um, of course, the Mosasaur, the Tylosaur, the Plesiosaur, uh, Dolichlorichops, the... Um, well, <laughs> what other kinds of things? There was uh, some type of pterosaur there. But the animals we've got represented are the land dinosaurs. So let's start out with, there were 40% Triceratops here. And these things are enormous and gorgeous and crazy. So iconic a dinosaur. About 9 foot, 8 to 9 foot back here at the back hip. Six, seven tons, you know, maybe eight elephant sized mass. They are very large. And I'm sure they would be very formidable to fight with those horns. 40% of those, and we'll have 20% Edmontosaurs here. Gigantic hadrosaurs that are 25 feet long and eight feet tall at the hip, nine feet. Weigh seven tons. They are not any kind of small animal at all. Bipedal. They can really get up and run. All right. Now, instead of the Thessalosaurus, since they don't have those in the game, we've got Dryosauruses here. Little four foot, four or five foot tall ornithopod, ornithomimid, that. You know, he's probably 75 to 100 pounds. If you could catch and eat one of him, and try uh, the Tyrannosaurus would be doing great. Easy meal. Though I'm sure he's not easy to catch. Probably get one shot at him, and I bet he goes quick. There are 1% uh, Ankylosaurs. And Ankylosaurs are the largest Ankylosaur there was. With great big club-like thagomizers, these things. Look how he... How could you even attack him? You would bust your mouth all to pieces on that creature. There's a couple more of them. There was another small type of ankylosaur. Not one I was familiar with. I know they found that notosaur in Canada. But as far as at the Hell's Creek formation, ankylosaurs were the one. Another very iconic dinosaur from there is the Pachycephalosaurus. They were there at about 1%, just like the Ankylosaur. Not very many, but they were there. It would have been something else to watch them if they did. If they did butt heads with these things to be smacking heads. I don't know. I don't know what you would do that. Uh, do with that. Maybe he just got bit on the head a lot because he's not very big. And so he got a gigantic skull. There were also about 5% Struthiomimus, and they were actually Struthios. I saw a Struthiomimus skeleton at the uh, museum there in Hell's Creek, or in Glasgow, that was from the Hell's Creek formation and from them making that lake. They're about 7 feet tall. They would be something else if you could get a hold of one. All right, and who else? There were a couple that there were barely any of. There were true dons, but only represented by a tooth found out there, a couple teeth. Little, you know, lizard and tiny mammal eating reptiles. Dinosaurs, all right. I'm sure they're like theropods of a type, but who else do we have? Taurosauruses. 0.5%. Just another Ceratopsian, though they do have the largest skull, supposedly, of any land mammal, or any land animal ever, of course, they're not mammals. Um, but they would have been hard to do too much to as well. They, I'm sure, in any kind of group, would be a formidable opponent. But the crazy thing is, is that there are 24% Tyrannosaurus here. And 
when I read that, I was very <laughs> kind of really shocked about how, how many there were in comparison to everything else because that's a quarter of all the animals here are Tyrannosauruses. And I think uh, the reasons are, one, the, the map that we just looked at is... Um, the way that everything bottlenecks together and drives the animals to these things, it really makes this the prime location for everything to stop, go from, come here and have babies, come here and die. And so just hanging around here, there would be all kinds of prey of all sorts. And so I think that's what this animal really was, was not only was he an apex predator, but he was an apex scavenger. Just He could eat anything these pre-maxillary incisors that he has on the front of his mouth, just like a hyena, just like a wolf. These things can chew bone, eat every part of the animal if they need to. And that would make you very successful in a place like this, because even if you couldn't catch some of these dinosaurs, you could injure them, they'd go die, you'd find them and eat them. You could just find them having injured each other, and eat that one, but you could also eat every bit of them, so you wouldn't have to just take the flesh and not injure your weapon, uh, your weapons, your big fangs or whatever. Um, you think about like allosauruses, they didn't have a fused roof of their mouth, so their skull didn't have the ability to twist and break things like a tyrannosaurus does. So they really had to just shear meat off of something and leave the rest. Where the T-Rex really had the ability to bust bone to crush anything that it had in its mouth because of that fused roof and those premaxillary teeth. Um, if you look at like hyenas and wolves, you'll find that they're, you'll find them in great numbers because they do consume everything. Um, you'll also find in, in every predator pretty well that all the prey around them has at some time been attacked by them and that shows on the fossils that they find of some of the hadrosaurs because a lot of them have been injured but live. And so the Tyrannosaurus probably wasn't a super successful hunter, but he probably did everything he could to survive and so in doing that was able to thrive and fill niches where other things would have taken, you know, over, but there just wasn't room because he ate everything that there was to eat, whether it was dead or alive. And the only other real predator that was here was a Utah raptor, and I'm sure he worked over some of the smaller stuff. But Utah raptors, six feet tall, these things are 13, 14 feet tall, they're gigantic. I mean, and that's at the hip because they don't stand fully erect. They, they're enormous. I've seen a fully fleshed out one before, and they're really something to see. But um, I really enjoyed learning this stuff about Hell's Creek and uh, seeing kind of that, uh, the, the map laying out the way I had it to show the uh, lay of the land and what really caused things to move to where they did. Um, I'm sure I would like to go and find some other, maybe predators to focus on what their lives were like and what the things around them, what animals they preyed on. So you can see he had hadrosaurs, he had triceratops, he had a few other small things. Um, but he had a lot of animals that probably passed through his territory too. Like I said, on the way from Wyoming up to Saskatchewan and back and forth as they move from grazing range to grazing range. I'm sure they had to stop here, had to pass through, and there's where the Tyrannosaurus just got fed for a few million years. But I hope you've enjoyed the video a little bit, or a lot, and I've certainly enjoyed learning more about Hell's Creek and the, the crazy density of Tyrannosauruses that live there. Um, I'll say goodbye and thanks for watching the video. Take a good look at him real quick. We'll see you later. Enjoy the Tyrannosaurus for a minute or two if you want. Take it easy.